happy tenant is a good tenant. We did not intend to be in the property management business. The property management industry is very sharing. We're providing housing for human lives. And life happens to everybody. You don't manage as many properties as I do without the stories. Like six grown men jump back like, what the hell was that? Something's about to eat us. You're listening to the Property Manager Podcast, brought to you by Buildium. Real stories, real people. I'm Tony Milo from Buildium, and this is the Property Manager Podcast. All right, welcome to the Property Manager Podcast. My name is Tony Milo, and as always, I am here with Rachel Graham, Director of Marketing, and Fred Tracy, video producer, multimedia extraordinaire. You change his title every single time. I do. <laughs> I do, because Fred is, is a very dynamic individual. I don't even know my own title. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so today we're talking about, uh, you know, actually a really interesting interview um, that I did with Glenn Russell of Coastal Property Group. And one of the reasons why it was just so different from the rest is because of his location, first and foremost, which is in Virginia Beach. Um, and for those of you who aren't familiar, well, Virginia Beach has a huge naval presence. Uh, it's, you know, uh, and that just brings a whole bunch of different dynamics to being a property manager in that market. Um, and, you know, especially when you talk about who your residents are and how you have to uh, manage those transitions and the transients. Yeah, and what's what was interesting about this one is, you know, we hear a lot of the factors that impact property managers and how they need to be thinking about their jobs and how they um, interact with their residents and create great experiences. This is, I think, a podcast first in terms of telling the stories of military families and uh, what goes into um, working in a market that that caters to military families who don't always have total agency over uh, where <laughs> where they're going to be living. Right, exactly. And so from that transience and from that uncertainty, um, you know, comes, you know, sort of challenges, but also opportunity. And one of the things that I like, uh, you know, what I liked about talking with Glenn is that he seems to really understand his market and he embraces that those changes um, and he really helps to serve his residents in making those transitions and also, you know, supporting his business. So I think with that, we should just uh, get to it and roll it. Today I'm here with Glenn Russell of Coastal Group Inc. from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Glenn, how you doing today? Good morning, doing great, thank you. Great, so great to have you on the show. You know, really grateful that uh, the recent Hurricane Dorian um, did not cause too much trouble in your area, as I understand it. We were very fortunate. Oh, that's, that, that is good. So tell me a little bit about the Coastal Group and, and what you do down in Virginia Beach. We're kind of a small company, a hybrid, and I had sold my large Remax, which was just a, a big machine, to a partner friend of mine. And then when we moved from the north end of Virginia Beach, which is kind of north of the resort area, uh, just to the west a little bit to the adjoining city, Norfolk, to another beach area called Ocean View, a guy came to me and said, hey, we need to open up a company in his name. And I said, well, we're not going to do it in your name. So we did the Coastal Group thing, but we were located right on a building on the bay with just these fabulous views. And and this was 04, 05 when, well, we started in 01, but in 03, 04, 05, the market here was uh, just screaming hot. So we were doing largely sales with some incidental, you know, about 100 properties that we were managing. Then as we grew a little bit more, we moved further uh, to the east to an area called uh, East Beach. And we were in a marina setting there thinking we would take, you know, get some more involvement there. And a friend of mine had passed away that I'd tried to recruit years ago to my Remax called uh, John Hansen. And so we ended up buying his company. So we went from about a hundred and a quarter properties to 250 overnight. Wow. And that's, and that's what impelled me, you know, to move forward with a much better product, which is why we ended up with Buildium. And we haven't looked back and we're delighted we did it. And we're up now, we have about 450, 460 units, but of those about 45 are in some stage of transition, being fixed up, sold, whatever. So we, we're always actively 405, 410 that are you know occupied. Uh, so we're kind of a hybrid. We grew in fits and starts in 04. And then as the market cooled off, uh, the property management became the, uh, the bedrock of our company. Yeah, that's an interesting point. Um, and I think a lot of people in the real estate industry are now looking to property management as a very stable business model, um, especially with all the technology available. And that's so how did you sort of make that shift? Like, how did you sort of realize that that's going to be the, the primary part of your business that's really going to be the most stable and worth, worth investing in? Like, what were the signals? Well, when I had my Remax office, I encouraged each of my uh, higher producers to manage 10 to 15 rentals which would pay for their assistant and then some of their office fees. And so everything they earned in commissions was totally to them. 
And as a result, we were managing about 400 to 450 rentals there. So I've always had an appreciation for the value of that kind of a base, a bank, if you will, of business. And of course, as we acquired the Hanson accounts, I figured out you know how to value that. And then we subsequently bought the company that Hanson had broken away from, Henry Hanson Tucker, and added their 30, I think it was 37 properties to the mix. So it, it's, it just, it happened uh, in fits and starts, but it, it was a, uh, intentional. Right. And you just, you saw the opportunity there and you're like, you know what, this is something I can grab onto and it can be better for, for the lifestyle that, that, you know, you wanted at the time, it can be better just for your overall growth and the speed at which that can happen. Um, so let's get a little, you know, the, the Virginia beach market is a unique one. Um, so tell me a little bit about, about what it's like today and how it's changed over the past five years. Well, in Virginia Beach, let's do Virginia Beach, Norfolk, Portsmouth, Chesapeake, Suffolk is kind of a, the south side of Hampton Roads. The north side is the Williamsburg, Hampton, Newport News, and we stay south side only. In fact, our motto we'll come back to is no bridges, no tunnels. We right. keep everything very contiguous to our, our office and where we live. Uh, so back to Virginia Beach, because we have two large military airfields, we have all the East Coast Navy SEALs, including SEAL Team 6, the Dev Group, and lots of ships were very heavily oriented to military and Department of Defense and government spending. And so, as you can imagine, the sequester that happened, what, five, six years ago, when the rest of the market was recovering from the overblown 04, 05, 06 downfall, we were not. We were flat. So we've been very sensitive to the military uh, environment. We had an awful lot of unintended investors that were being transferred and said, we've got to rent our houses, we can't sell them. And so that that helped us grow. So we're really tuned into that military thing, as you can imagine, because we went, as a number, we went from regional gross domestic product of government and DOD from 48% down to 43 and, and until the last two years, that's where we stayed. So because that's no longer flat and we're growing the military again, uh, our rents are on a steady increase as our property values. So it's a, it's, the market's heating up here and it had not for years. Yeah, that's very interesting. You know, so you're always paying attention to the government regulations and you're keeping your finger on the pulse there uh, and how those sort of impact your overall business. I imagine it's similar to what San Diego goes through as well. I think it's very parallel. Okay, so as far as the environment on the coast, like what are you seeing as far as rents? You're obviously seeing a lot more activity because of the increase in, in military spending. Um, you know, are you seeing rents then increase um, as well? We are. We're seeing a steady increase of probably you know two to three percent a year, which is I think a comfortable zone for people. Now it also means that on the low end affordability scale, you know, some of the people are struggling. So there are you know many different programs in our area to help with that, and and we don't. We do some of the Section 8 voucher rentals, but not very many. Um, and going back to the makeup of like uh, Virginia, Virginia Beach and the kind of owners that you work with, they were primarily uh, accidental, if I'm not mistaken, right? Accidental landlords. Well, a number of them. And then and then as they realize that this, hey, this works out pretty well. I mean, we have some older retired military folks that their homes, the rental homes are paid for. Right. So it, it's just a nice steady stream of income for them. And uh, I'm a, one guy's a retired Navy SEAL, and he's out in the mountains of Colorado, and he goes hunting every other day. And I'm like, well, I'm jealous, but um, delighted to manage his property for him. So there's a, there's like a lifestyle element that just comes with um, the location itself, the fact that there's like a military base there, but also it's there's a strong, it sounds like, retirement community. We do get a steady migration from the Northeast, the snowbirds that don't want to live as far south as Florida or, or others. And uh, somebody described us once as a Sears and Roebuck hot dog and hamburger town. So we're just kind of a, this middle class, very diverse, pretty well desegregated. So we've, we've gotten past a lot of the crazy that some other areas are still having to deal with. And uh, just it's a good quality of life. Yeah, it definitely seems so. And, you know, I've seen a lot of Northeasterners, you know, definitely go to Virginia, Virginia Beach for vacation. Um, mm -hmm. You know, enjoy a lot of the, the nature down there as well as, you know, the golf courses and infrastructure for those type of things. One of the things that's interesting for me is obviously, you know, the landscape is changing. Um, rents are increasing. There's more economic activity. But you're also having to balance that with you know, um, a population that is, that has very different needs. So how do you, how do you find yourself balancing, you know, marketing, for example, or, you know, uh, operations between sort of the boomers and millennials? Like how do you sort of balance that? We, un unlike some companies, uh, there was a lady who uh, I spoke to recently who was buying the building and product and she managed three large multi-unit properties. Well, you can gain economies of scale 
with those types of multi-units. We don't have those economies of scale because ours are largely all ones and twos and they're different owners. And so we really have to adapt. And so we've, we've tried to simplify somewhat by figuring out what we don't do. And so to be able to communicate with the people that are kind of in our bell curve, which is two to four bedrooms, not concierge, really fancy on one end and not really low end, you know, properties in terrible condition on the other end, but just kind of that middle of the population, middle class, you know, blue collar, lower white collar, middle white collar is kind of our, our uh, marketplace. And we've developed a relationship where we probably pick up a third of our business at least every year, if not half due to repeats and referrals. So that, that's been real positive. And we, we just try to take really good care of our owners and indirectly then by helping them, we're taking good care of their tenants as well. That's great. That's definitely uh, an awesome way that I know we, we love to help property managers, um, you know, uh, do as well and support them in that, in that, uh, let's, let's call it a, a really a business objective and a, and a journey and really a mentality of, of, of doing business. Now, switching gears a little bit, you mentioned that you recently acquired or you've acquired, seems a couple of companies um, over the history of, of uh, Coastal Group. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what, what came along with that? What were some of the, you know, you obviously switched gears and, and got into property management software because you needed to scale and you needed that infrastructure. But, but what were the kind of things that, that, uh, that came along with that that might have been stumbling blocks? Well, great question. Let's, when we purchased the Hanson uh, accounts, as I mentioned, they were about 125. They were using an old DOS-based product. And so I knew that we needed to upgrade that. But we, we did acquire the relationships. But what everyone else that looked at acquiring that company was going to buy their book of business and let all the staff go and close the office. And what I realized was that the corporate knowledge of the two gals, Jerry and Chandler, that were working there was too valuable to not transition. So we integrated them into our company. It was a fairly smooth transition, but of course you've got relationships, you've got different processes, they were using different forms. If you're just very methodical about it and really think it through and you notify all the parties involved in plenty of time and and you reassure them that you're gonna maintain the relationships and the the hands-on that they're used to, that you're not some big machine gobbling up these properties, it it can go fairly smoothly. And, And we've been fortunate in that regard. And in our buyout, when we did the buyout, we won't get into hard numbers or anything, but basically the first year was the seller's responsibility. If we had any attrition due to either they're being sold or we just lost the accounts, that came off the cost. But after year one, it was our responsibility to maintain those relationships. Definitely a good thing to build into uh, an acquisition deal for sure. That that was smart. Um, So that could be a whole other conversation, I'm sure. Indeed. Um, Just even getting a contract that works. Uh, and a deal that works that must have taken a while. How long did that take you, by the way? Uh, I think we started looking at them in like October, November, and had finalized the purchase by December. And uh, it must have been a little bit sooner than that. We actually physically moved into the space in October. So we actually moved to their space because I didn't want their older owners, and many of them were older retired people. I didn't want them thinking, oh, Lord, we're dragging them to Norfolk and to Ocean View, which is at the time considered kind of a rough and ready, you know, transitioning community. Uh, so we actually, we became Hanson in a sense by blending in with them. So it was more of a blend and a merger than it was an acquisition and a complete takeover. Uh-huh. So that, that probably boded well with uh, the existing owners. That did help. And of course, we no longer are on the water and I have a nice view of a parking lot instead of a marina or the ocean, but oh well. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do what's right for business. You, you know? put pretty pictures on the wall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, all right. So we've, we've heard a little bit about your market. We've heard about some of the acquisitions you've done. Now, you know, in around all of that, how do you figure out what services you should offer? How did you figure out what services you should offer? What was your market calling for? Great question. As I learned and grew as a Remax broker, I learned with each individual agent to have the same com- same type of logic of questions, which is it's easier sometimes to say what you don't do. So what we don't do, for example, is industrial. We don't do high-rise condominiums. We don't do short-term rentals. We don't do vacation rentals. And what, we, what became very clear to us is that we do this kind of middle-class bell curve. And then once you figure out what that is, you want all of your efforts and your marketing and your behavior to be you know, in sync with that. Okay. And I often think of marketing as a pitching machine. Yep. You want the pitching machine to be throwing the ball to your strike zone. Mm-hmm. Hundred percent. You don't want to be reaching across the plate or swinging high or wide or behind your back. You want to be hitting at the strike zone that you're good at. Mm-hmm. So we we tried to really uh, I don't know just tune it into that. 
into our unique market. And that's that's going to vary with every single property manager and or their style is going to dictate that. Yeah. So just to jump into that a little bit more, like how did you like what are the, the, the two primary audiences? We hinted at them before, um, you know, retirees, potentially um, maybe military. But but yeah, who are your main audiences that you're targeting, you know, for your strike zone? Well, our main our main growth for the last several years has been young military families and uh, Navy SEALs who have bought properties and then they're deploying and they're like, you know what, I'm just going to rent it and I'll go buy another one when I come back. Mm-hmm. And so we have those folks have one, two and three properties. And so that that's been kind of who we on board with. And we uh, we like to treat our military and I'm prior military. Mm-hmm. We try to treat them with kid gloves and, and understand what they're going through with all the you know constant change and, and chaos being thrown at them in their lives. So Buildium, of course, is a great tool because they could be in Okinawa and, and be looking at their account. <laughs> on their true. cell phone. I mean, it's just brilliant. <laughs> That's true. Transparency and, and technology. It's what we're all yeah. about. Um, big, big plus. Yeah. Yeah. And another thing too, I mean, how do you find that you're able to market to the military? I'm not super familiar with, you know, with, with how one, you know, really gets on the radar of, of military personnel, um, <laughs> no pun intended. Um, but you know, how, how do you, like, what channels do you use to reach out? And I'm sure the fact that you're ex-military also really helps. Uh, actually, it might be an ex-military. It, it's been so long that I've been out that I don't, I don't market that, but we do know who these folks are. We, we find that the all property management tool, for example, was a very good tool for us that kind of runs in, you know, uh, in cycles where we'll get a, quite a number of them and then it'll get quiet for a while and then we'll get some more inquiries. So that has been positive. Just the routine management, I guess we get repeats and referrals and people are aware of us. And I don't know, it may even be that some of the tenants are t- telling other owners about us. Right. So it, it's, just, it's just, it's been, yeah, it's been a lot of word of mouth and a lot of, uh, and just relationships. We sell anyway, or 40 to 50 properties at least a year. In fact, I'm probably understating that probably mm-hmm. closer to 80. Mm-hmm. Um, and this year it'll be that. Um, and so that, that also leads to uh, word of mouth and repeats and referrals. Right. So the fact that you have that sort of ecosystem of service uh, really helps you, um, you know, keep your property management portfolio um, sizable. And it's just it's just a good ecosystem that feeds itself. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, Now, profit margin is a big challenge for, you know, the property management industry these days. Uh, You know, overhead can be more and more expensive, especially with a physical office because real estate prices and rents are going up. how have you found creative ways to make more money with additional services for your residents and owners? Great question. And, and I was feeling, um, as any business would, some pressures from as we go further with the internet and the Zillows and the RPM and the rent warehouses and other competition, sure. you've, got to, you've got to be good at what you're doing. So rather than price cut, we tried to enhance services. And so one of the ways we can do that is without charging things to our owner, we're just with the sheer use of convenience fees for the uh, tenants paying their rent. And we get probably 65% of our rent is paid with ePay now, which is, is just fantastic for us. That, uh, that's great. Because previously it was manual. They'd come in with their check or they'd mail it in. They'd want to stand there and talk. They wanted a paper receipt and here's what's wrong with my property. And it was just enormous man hours. So coming back to this, the convenience fees pay for our entire pro uh, subscription. So it's just a brilliant solution for us. We're now charging a small admin fee, and I mean very small, and the convenience fees we keep really low as well, but they still are a very soft nibble. The tenants don't object to it because they're used to paying much higher admin and convenience fees elsewhere, and that uh, helps pay for some of the ancillary things we're doing. Now, the we're also, we've been really slack at the, the, uh, Buildium has that nice, bit where you can do the management fee and then if it's unrented for some reason or the fee not rent is not paid you can still collect a minimum flat fee and we're going to be integrating that in 2020 because there're just too many there's too much dead time that we're losing money on and yet we're working our brains out you know turning these properties around mm-hmm. so that plus project management fees for any larger renovations and repairs that seems to me to be the the two we don't upcharge in our case for maintenance which is one of the things i guess that distinguishes us from a competitor mm-hmm. Uh, although we handle oof, at least 400 invoices uh, a month. And so we're paying a lot of bills and, and we're not charging for that. And that that's probably an error. <laughs> well, there's always time to figure it out. Right. But one of the, yep. one of the things you said, well, and, the, uh, and the software lends itself to that very nicely. So, yeah. And, and I think one of the things you said that's interesting is that the, 
the convenience fees that you're charging uh, are paying for the software itself and paying for totally the pro subscription. Yeah. And, and I, and I know, you know, of course, like this is me from Buildium, just like saying something like this and, you know, like plugging the business and saying it's so easy to, to the software to pay for itself. But like the reality is like it can, but also it took you the time and effort to convince people to pay through that channel. Right, so it, it did. That you, took some time. Yeah. So how did you how did you do that? Because I know that's a challenge for for some well, property. You it, can't just expect uh, everything. You know, flip a switch and it works. You know, there's other things that have to happen. Well, here's one way though. Every time a tenant comes in with a check, we say, look, you know, we're going to either have to do one of two things. We're going to charge you a large manual check fee, or we can very in, inexpensively set up this uh, e pay for you, and we have their check in our hand. So we just plug them, we log in as user, set them up in the account and say, here, you can either have us take it out on the second or third of the month, every month, or you can uh, manually go on and, and hit the button yourself. Which do you prefer? And so we just by sheer hands-on conversion, we've been able to move them over in that direction. The same thing with owners and the same thing with vendors. One of the big things for me was how do we reduce the touch points for all the different things we've got to do and Buildium lends itself beautifully to that. Yeah, that's that's great to hear. Um, you know, especially when we're talking about how property managers and property management companies can position their offering and position their pricing for residents to encourage that type of behavior. I think that's just that's just amazing. Like, you know, insurance companies do it. Like other other industries easily do that. It's because it's a volume. It's an it's an efficiency business. I went to a store yesterday to pay for a small item, and I pulled out a twenty dollar bill. And the guy said, "I'm sorry, we don't do cash here." <laughs> I'm like, I, I, "But it's brilliant, right?" I did the the rental application fee. We used to be people be bringing in their crumpled up thirty five dollars and one dollar bills, and then we'd have to account for it and make sure it got to the bank and didn't end up in somebody's pocket. And now it's just automated. It's it's all paid by credit card, and that's the way we roll. Yeah, I mean, just huge time savings. Yeah, and to, from the research that we've done as well, like you know, some some people might say, well, a lot of boomers like won't want to pay like through an app or won't want to pay using technology, and that's hundred percent not true. Baloney. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent not true. Like they like using technology just as much as millennials, uh, Gen Z, especially when it comes to something that saves them time because nobody wants to write a check if they don't have to. Well, and let's come back to your question then that we've got military people and other people that pay us by allotment. Okay, so be it. It comes into our bank account. It identifies who they are and we have our bookkeeper post it. No big deal. We've got 65-ish percent of our money coming in with ePay and with the payment allocations and now that beautiful prepayments functionality for the early paid rent that just auto flows on the you know the next uh, rent charge day I mean those are brilliant and then on the very end we were manually having people go out and do the pay near me thing but now with that fully integrated uh, we've got uh, I figured out we collected one hundred sixty thousand dollars in rent already this year using pay near me which is is this little app that the renter runs around with and, and shows their gift card barcode at the whatever store they go to that has that capability and boom, they get an immediate email receipt and it's posted to their account and nobody has to touch anything. Yeah. That <laughs> I mean, it, it's just brilliant. And these are people that don't have bank accounts. They've been driving across town and taking a taxi to hand deliver their money orders that they paid more than the pay near me for. It's like, this is heaven sent. <laughs> well, 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 Glenn, uh, you yeah, know, you've definitely touched on a lot of Buildium <laughs> functionality and uh, yeah, I thank you for it. You know, you could, you're, you're definitely well, making this easy for me. <laughs> well, these are great tools that I'm telling you. That, <laughs> I mean, between the, we, the other day, I just, as a casual thing, I said, okay, in the last 30 days, how many electronic payments in or out did we do? And it was 982. And in 30 days, we did 982 touches electronically that involved almost nothing on our part, no effort on our part to do it. It's like, good grief. Right. So you've, you've basically seen your business and your efficiency um, just increase over the years as like new functionality has been available. Well, let's say, and let me hit this point. If, if Buildium costs X, my annual subscription, to hire that capability to be done manually, I'd have to hire three employees at the cost of about 10x. Right. And Buildium works 24-7. It never gets the flu. <laughs> it just works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we I mean, never get the flu the here. It's the best employee ever. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, people. But <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And, and you know, there, well, what's interesting about it is, yes, you're using technology, but there's also human elements to all of this, right? Like you mentioned it during like the acquisition 
the acquisitions that you've done. And, and so I'm curious, like, yes, we're talking a lot about, you know, the tweaks that you've made to, uh, to use technology to improve your business and efficiency and overall bottom line. When it comes to maintaining that human touch, how have you been able to take that time savings and dedicate it to that? Uh, we have Ben who's coordinating the maintenance and the, the tenants are getting really good about sending us the maintenance requests so that we can track them in the system and they can get immediate responses that we're paying attention to them and they're not being ignored and they, they know that it's a real thing. So I think that that's a big deal. And so even though it's technology, it is core, it is confirming with them that you matter, we hear you, and we're going to try to do something about this. And, and just all of our staff, we just try to be people friendly and and decent and kind and understanding when they're throwing us these curveballs. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Have you, so I imagine you've experimented with the, and seen the new resident center app. Uh, which one is that one again? It's actually resident facing. So there's a whole new resident center app that Buildium is launching um, and pushing very, very soon um, within the next week. Um, it's available right now, but it essentially gives you know property managers the ability and gives residents the ability to submit a maintenance request from uh, directly from an app. So it's oh, right. a mobile experience. And it also consolidates on the property manager end. One of the things that that is cool is it's consolidating all of the communications into one. So say if a resident sends a communication from the resident center app uh, and also texts, it puts all of those things and consolidates them all into one channel. So it makes sure that you can never like miss a beat. Well, the communications tab channel that you guys opened up is brilliant because now I can text to those people that want to be texted. I can email to those who want to be emailed and it tracks all of that. And that that's really the lady that had the three multifamilies, for example, she could be using that work order thing and she could be tracking completed tasks and efficiencies very readily with her built in vendor, you know, handyman repairman. I mean, it's it's totally conducive to tracking and narrowing down the channels of data that are just coming at you from all directions. Yeah. And I think we're really touching on something that, that we've been seeing here at Buildium and the idea of making things simpler for people with a whole host of technology, um, just consolidating it, making it easy to digest, and then giving that transparency and that immediacy. Um, mm-hmm. That communicates a human element. Because if you if somebody sends you a communication and it takes you a week to get back to them, like they'll most likely be pretty pissed off at you, especially if it's yeah, like then they're ready to kill you. Yeah, right. <laughs> Right. So hundred percent. that's a great point. Um, just make, you know, showing that you are there, that you are available, that your presence, uh, your, that, that you're present and that, uh, someone is being heard, I think makes a big difference. Well, great technology in my mind is like this hardcore terminator platinum titanium machinery covered with this very soft, fuzzy teddy bear outline that when you interact with it, it's very comfortable and pleasant. <laughs> I like, but the efficiency is unbelievable. I'm just thinking of a whole bunch of Arnold Schwarzenegger impressions now. Yeah, I know they just boom. Right? <laughs> he has a teddy bear in his hand, but he's also holding some kind of very large weapon. Yeah, weaponry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the Terminator. <laughs> uh, well, Glenn, this has been awesome. So, one parting question. Um, so, really, when it comes to you know property management overall, like where do you? like see yourself like in the next five years, like what is like the coastal group's goal, like to really, uh, you know, stay on top in the Virginia beach market? Well, great question. One is we anticipate picking up small mom and pop residential, I mean, not residential, but residential scale commercial buildings, because those are, that's a really easy management for us. I mean, that's just, that's so painless compared to households. It's ridiculous. The other is, as I mentioned, succession planning. My son-in-law, Macon, is doing a terrific job as our office manager, kind of overall, he and I do the overall accounting. So that is in place. And I highly recommend anybody that has any age on them at all, like from 40 on up, to start allowing for the ability to have a succession go smoothly in the event that you need to or want to. And so our future is just to continue to streamline and also to standardize. We have we have different property managers with very different styles in our company. And to the degree that we can streamline that and standardize that with forms and procedures, uh, that just greatly increases our efficiencies and makes our life easier. Yeah, it's, it's definitely like the idea of, and I think I've gotten this from, from speaking with you, is that you are a planner. You like to have everything in line. And I think that that's just 
you know, when you're looking at your market, you're changing with it and you are planning for the next step. And I think that's, I think I just found a name of this podcast. All right, then. The next step. <laughs> uh, plan plan your sweet spot. Maybe we'll go with that. But anyway, Glenn, yeah. thank you so much for uh, for speaking with me today. And uh, yeah, as always, always a pleasure. And uh, we'll hope to have you back soon. Well, I'm delighted to help in any way I can. I think uh, what you guys do for us is uh, priceless and just I'm delighted to be part of it. What a nice way to end an episode. Glenn, I want to say, we all want to say thank you, your kind words and compliments. It really means a lot to hear that it impacts your day in the way that it does. And I know the product team, the engineers, everyone loves that feedback. So thank you again. Tony, let me hit you up with this question. What was the most interesting aspect of this interview? You know, of course, it's interesting that, you know, how Glenn uses technology, how organized he is. You used to be in the Navy, so he runs everything like in a very organized fashion. But what really struck me is also how he carries that level of detail and care all the way to his succession planning. So he's already talking about that. And we've never actually talked about that before on the Property Manager podcast. So I think that's very, it's a prominent topic for sure that's on a lot of property managers' minds because we know that this is a family business. And so passing the torch onto a son or a daughter uh, is, is definitely like a topic of interest for property managers. Yeah, Glenn gave us a lot of podcast firsts in his stories, didn't he? Um, and as Tony, you and Fred know, and uh, listeners, if you listen on a regular basis, you know we are coming up on my favorite part of the podcast, which is where we showcase the epic stories that property managers have. You all have them. We love to listen to them. Uh, we've been talking about this all year. Um, but I think uh, this is sort of a sad podcast first in that you know a lot of the epic stories we hear are mind-blowing and hilarious. Some of them are very heartfelt, but I feel like this is kind of the first heartbreaking epic story that uh, we've heard. Yeah, for sure, Rachel. And I think that's just, uh, you know, comes with the territory, um, especially, you know, when, when we're thinking about a market where certain people have, you know, less and less control. So we don't want to give it away. I think we should just uh, roll the story. Our area, because it's military, also has the NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, um, headquarters here, all of different uh, nationalities here with NATO. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the unusual and unfortunate ones was we had many Turkish officers and Turkish students at Old Dominion University working on their masters and doctorates. And when the uh, Turkish revolution was thwarted by President Erdogan, all of the military were basically assumed to be revolutionaries and they were immediately cut off from pay oh. in order to return home to Turkey. Wow. Well, well A, most of them didn't want to go back to Turkey because it was it meant prison. They vacated 35,000 plus prisoners out of their prison so they could put all these intellectuals, professors, and military in prison because they thought they might be revolutionaries. That is crazy. So we had at least five or six of these tenants that suddenly had no homeland, no income, and no future. <sighs> wow. And so what I'm sure do? other people have had parallel scenarios either due to storms or you know businesses closing or whatever but you just have to be as compassionate and uh, resilient as possible with situations like that and the, these folks i mean our, our heart just went out to them and of course the the poor landlord who's a you know navy enlisted guy living in timbuktu he can't afford to be their bank so we we had to we had to transition them to other solutions and fortunately we have a strong rental market we we're able to get the properties re-rented but it was a mess. You know, we talk all the time about the importance of property managers investing in creating a great resident experience. And we usually talk about it in terms of people coming in, you know, so how they get introduced to the property, how they move in, and then what their living experience is like. And that is a huge part of the resident experience. Um, but I cannot imagine how disorienting it must be to get the phone call that says, more or less at the drop of a hat, you can't stay here and what it must mean to have someone who's in there with them with all the details and all the small things that go into needing to pack and move uh, who can really help you navigate that transition out you know that too is part of someone's resident experience and hopefully that's um, something that will stay with them yeah and it's clear that that glenn understands that and he supports his resident residents even with the things that they can't control and sometimes it doesn't benefit his business and that is okay 
That's just a part of the territory. And he understands that the value of home uh, and how important that is for people. And, uh, you know, that's definitely one of the, the, core, the core things you can tell that means a lot to him. So with that, if you enjoyed this episode, definitely be sure to give us a five-star rating. Um, you know, share it with your friends. And if you have an idea for a future podcast, please let us know. We're all ears, uh, and we'd love to hear from you. So with that said, hope you have a good one. Until next time. <laughs>